share this full screen. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to talk to you today about Blevy, a library I built that does a full text search uh, for Go. Some of you might be wondering, wait, what? Blevy? Uh, everywhere I go, I've, I've talked about this in Europe, I've talked about it here in India now. Uh, everyone I meet has a slightly different way of pronouncing this. Uh, so I thought this would be a nice helpful reminder. Uh, the one on the right is Believe, uh, but we're actually Blevy here on the left. So, so who am I? Uh, Marty Schock, as you all know. I work at Couchbase, uh, which is a NoSQL database. And I'm not really not going to talk about that today. We have a booth outside. If you want to know more, feel free to stop by. But I will just highlight we have an SDK for Go, something I've worked on and contributed to. And internally in our server product, we're adding three big new features that are all being built with Go. Uh, so I just want to highlight the future uh, at Couchbase with Go is very bright. Uh, and we have an office here in Bangalore. So if you're interested, stop by the booth. Now, a lot of people, first question they ask, why another full text search? We've already got Lucene, we've got Elastic Search and Solar built on top of that. And these are really great products. And I'm the first to admit, they are great solutions. Uh, I've built and delivered solutions to customers using them. So if you're already using Java, you should strongly consider that. But sometimes your architecture doesn't already have Java or the JVM involved, and adding that is kind of a burden. So we started off asking ourselves the question, could we build 50% of Lucene's text analysis, combine that with an off-the-shelf KV store, and maybe something interesting comes out of it? And we think it did. Uh, so we have this pluggable text analysis engine. The idea is using Golang interfaces uh, to allow us to not build all the components up front, build the most important ones, and let users write their own. Perfect use of interfaces. We have this pluggable KV store because we didn't want to start out and write some custom binary format in the very beginning. Maybe down the road we'll decide that's the right thing to do, but we think we can get pretty far just by using these off-the-shelf KV stores. So right now we have LevelDB, BoltDB, ForestDB, and we'd like to add RocksDB soon in the future. And the cool thing is, it's not a matter of just choosing the best one, it's like a lot of engineering. Depending on your use case and your workload, you might want to choose a different one to, to better suit those needs. So before we go too far, really briefly, what is search? Obviously, this is what most people think of when you say search. A box, you type in what you're looking for, and you get good results. Sometimes it also means an advanced search. Maybe now you're adding the search for phrases. Maybe you want to restrict the search to different fields. Maybe you also want to add some date range searches or some other numerical range searches to, to combine with your full text search. And then when we look at the results, spelling suggestion is very common these days. So in this case, I searched for blubby search, all one word. Google's suggesting maybe I should do it as two separate words. In the results, we see a little text snippet here. This helps the user understand why this document was returned as a part of the, of the result set. And then taking it a step further, highlighting inside the result. So here you see blubby search is actually in bold. Again, helping the user understand why this particular document came back in the results set. And finally, faceted search. Uh, this is very popular. You see this a lot on retail websites. So here I'm searching for books for the term Golang. And the important part here is on the left-hand side. Right? You see these different categories, and then in parentheses, a count, telling you how many books fall into those categories. And it's not just useful information, it's navigation, too. You click on that, and you drill deeper into the results. It's a very popular feature. So let's go ahead and get started with the library. We felt it was really important to make the library easy to use. And in Go, that most often means making the library Go gettable. Uh, so with this one command, you can install Blevy. If you in include the slash dot 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 at the end, you'll also get the command line utilities, which are a great way to sort of debug and diagnose uh, your index after you've got it built. Now you're ready to write some code. So here's our first program. We're actually going to build an index. Start off by importing the library. Again, we wanted to make sure it was easy to use, and that meant for 99% of the use cases, we want you to only have to import that one package. Behind the scenes, we have a lot of other packages layering the different technologies, but for normal users, you're going to import that single package. Next, you have to have a data model, some sort of data that you want to put into the index. Uh, Blevy is designed to use reflection, so it's going to take your data model, look at it, and figure out how to insert that into the index. So I've created just a very simple structure here. Uh, type person uh, with one field name of type string. Now, once we're in the main function here, we're going to need to create what we call an index mapping. The index mapping is what tells Blevy how you want to go from your documents into fields inside the index. Now, we have a default mapping, and that's what I'm creating here. If I just create a new index mapping, I get this default mapping. 
And we put a lot of effort into making the default mapping do as much as we possibly can. But it's important to always remember this is here, right? Because getting high quality search results is dependent on having a good mapping for your data. So this is a default, it'll work for now, but if you ever have problems with your results, you want to come back and revisit the mapping you're using. Now that we have a mapping, we can go ahead and create a new index. So I'm using the new function, which takes two parameters. The first one is the path, I'm just calling it people.blevy. And the second one is the mapping we just created. And that's going to return either an index or an error. Now we're ready to go ahead and put some data into the index. So I've created an instance of person with my name, Marty Schock. And then in the next line, we actually use the index method on the index that we created. Again, it takes two parameters. The first one is a unique identifier for the document. It's a string, M1. And person is the instance we just created. That'll either succeed or return an error. And if we were to go ahead and run that, we get to the end, it says index document. So you can see in just 20 lines of code here, we've now created our first index, ready to go. Now that we've created an index, we probably want to open it up and search it. So here, I'm starting off with the Blevy open method. This is opening an existing index. Unlike the new method, this just takes one parameter, which is the path. And the reason is we've serialized the index mapping that we created and stored that inside the index. So all subsequent use of this index is going to use the, net, the mapping we used when we first created it. Again, that's either going to return the index or an error. Now we're ready to start building our query. Here I'm building what's called a term query. A term query is really the simplest thing you can build you can search for when you're looking in an inverted index. So this is looking for an exact match for the term Marty inside the index. Now we're going to build a request. And you might be wondering, what's the query, what's the request? So the way I think of it is, the query is describing what we're looking for, and the request is describing how we want those results returned to us. So here, in this case, we could add, for example, how many results we want to get per page, uh, maybe uh, how many results we want to skip over if we're doing pagination, uh, or if we have maybe some stored fields that we want to return along with the documents, we could configure that here. But for now, we're just going to use the default search request. And now we can go ahead and invoke the search method with that request. That's going to return either a set of results or an error. And in this case, with the data we just have, that matches one document. There was only one in there. Uh, it does contain the term Marty. So you can see the identifier, M1. And then the number you see in parentheses is the score. And when you have multiple documents, uh, that score will be more meaningful in terms of how the different uh, documents are ranked. Now, that was really just to show how simple it was to get started. 20 lines to build the index, another 15 or so to search. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, to show off more, we need a little bit more realistic data set. So what I did is I took the conference schedule. It's not a huge data set by any means, uh, but it gives us some additional fields that we can use to just kind of dig into the data. So if you haven't seen it, this is the schedule here on the left-hand side. And each one of those links has a more detailed section uh, with the content like you see over on the right. I wrote some code to parse the HTML and build, sort of extract the data. That's not interesting for this talk. Uh, but the end result is I map the data into the structure that you see here. So we have a unique identifier, summary, description, and speaker. Those are all strings. What I've also added is a time, so the start time of each talk. That's using the uh, time structure from the time package. And then I also have the duration, which in this case I'm storing as a float 64 of the number of minutes for each talk. Now, you can also see I have the JSON struct tags uh, on the right there. That's a convenience. Blovy is going to recognize those. And then when we do uh, searches where we restrict to certain fields, I'm going to be able to use these lowercase names to refer to those fields. So I've gone ahead and built the index. Uh, to save time, I didn't show that. But I'm going to run a few different kinds of searches now. Uh, so what we see on line 8, I'm building what's called a phrase query. So before we did a term search, which was just a, a single term, the phrase is looking for multiple terms occurring in a particular sequence. So here I'm going to search for the, the terms quality, search, and results. I put that into an array of strings and use that when I'm building the phrase query. I'm also, you can see here, passing in that description field. So this is also going to restrict this particular search just to the description field. And one other thing I'm going to show in this search, you see on line 11, I've added this highlight capability. Uh, so what this is going to do is, inside of the search results, it's going to highlight the actual terms that matched the text we were searching for. And when we run that, we see we get a little bit more information than we saw in the first search because we have more fields being returned. Uh, we had looked in the description field, and there you see highlighted quality search results, which was the phrase we were looking for. Now, we actually have a number of, kind of you know, maybe seven or eight different kinds of searches that we support, and you can compose them uh, using Boolean queries, uh, but I don't have time to go through all of them today. So what I've done is I've jumped ahead, and we're looking at a query string. So all the others we've seen so far have been programmatic, where a programmer is building up the query. 
But sometimes you want to allow the end user to be able to just type in a string and have that compose a more complex query. And this is where you'll use query string. The syntax, if you're familiar with Lucene at all, is very similar. Uh, it's not quite as, as complete, but it's very similar. So here on line 8, I have plus description colon text. This is going to restrict the search to the description field and look for the term text. And the plus means it must occur in the, query, in, in the result set. On line 9, I'm using summary colon and then text indexing in quotes. So by putting it in quotes, I'm triggering a phrase search. And again, I'm restricting it to the summary field. And since I don't have a plus or a minus, it means it may occur in the results. Uh, and so that means if it does occur, it's going to end up scoring higher. But the fact that it's missing isn't going to prevent a document uh, from being in the results set. On line 10, I have summary colon believe tilde 2. So again, we didn't see that one earlier, but that's triggering a fuzzy search. Uh, fuzzy searches work by finding terms that are within a certain edit distance of the original term. Uh, and so the tilde 2 is actually specifying an edit distance of 2 in this case. Uh, here we see minus description colon Lucene, so this would eliminate any documents that happen to use the term Lucene in that field. And then on line 12, we actually have a numeric range query. So if you remember when we were indexing the documents, I had the duration of each talk indexed as well. Uh, so here we're going to restrict it to ones where it's shorter than 30 minutes. So again, if we go ahead and run that, it's a little more complex query, but you see that also matches this talk that we're in right now. Blobby also comes with some optional HTTP handlers. So everything, again, you've seen so far is programmatic, and you can wire that up in your application however you want. But sometimes you want to expose this over a web interface. Uh, so we provided these optional handlers. The ones we provide uh, basically map all the major Blobby operations uh, into HTTP requests. They basically make the assumption that the incoming data is, is JSON. So that means your index mapping can be specified in JSON. Your document bodies are assumed to be JSON. And we actually built a sample app that wires all this up together called Blobby Explorer. And I have a link here if you want to check it out. We don't have time to do a demo or anything. There's a screenshot of what it looks like at the bottom. Again, for new users, it looks very much like a single node of Elasticsearch. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, uh, this would be very familiar. Now, we've seen a lot of functionality, but what can you build with this? So I wanted to put it all together. So I built an app called the unofficial GopherCon India Schedule Search. I have a hosted version at the URL down below if you want to play around with it. That's online right now. Uh, but we'll just take a quick, brief look at it. So again, it's your standard search app, a single box you can type into. And here I've typed in Go, uh, which, as you would expect, Go is going to match almost all the talks here. Surprisingly, it did not match two of them. I still haven't gone back to figure out which ones those were, but that's an interesting uh, side topic. So here you see the results. Again, we've got the title of the talk, we've got the speaker's name, the start time, the duration in minutes. Uh, and then in the description field, I've gone ahead and highlighted any of the matching terms. So here you see Go is highlighted in the various results. Also, the score is in that little bubble on the right-hand side. This supports pagination. So again, there were 28 or so talks, I believe, that matched. Uh, so that's split across three pages with 10 results on each page. And on the right-hand side, we have that refine results, results, which is the, the faceting that we saw earlier. So I've created two facets. One is for the day of the talk. So if you remember, we had the start time of each talk indexed along with it. So I've created two buckets, one for Friday and one for Saturday. And then again, in the, in the parentheses, you see how many matched. So let's go ahead and say we want to attend the talk on Saturday. So I'm going to check that box. And now that 13, that, I went ahead and updated the results. So it basically reran the search with an additional filter applied. So now we see there's 13 results, and we've restricted it just to the ones occurring on Saturday. The second facet you see there is for the duration. So again, there's basically two durations. There's the standard 25-minute talks, and then the keynotes are a little longer. So you see on Saturday, there are two that are going to be longer than 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and just check that box. And now we've again updated again, and see now we've drilled it down to those two results. Now, I want to highlight, this took about half a day to maybe a full day, somewhere in that range, just to put it together. And that was all just front-end work, right? That was a matter of scraping the HTML to get the data out that I wanted, putting it in the index, using all the functionality we provided, and then just mapping this with some HTML and JavaScript to make it look a little bit prettier. At this point, I'd love to have a call for you to join the community. Uh, so far, I'd say the majority of the functionality has been built by me. We've gotten up to, I don't know, eight or so contributors. Uh, but it's not going to get where I want it to go just with me working on it. Uh, so we'd really like you to contribute. The best way to do that, we have an IRC chat room. If you need to talk to me real time, that's the best way to do it. We use Google Groups for discussion. So if you have a use case, you're not sure how to use it or how, what's the best way to analyze your text, send us an email. It's the best way to go. If you want to plan a contribution, right? 
The best way to make sure that it gets merged smoothly is to discuss your plans ahead of time. And of course, all the code we're doing is on GitHub, Apache version 2 license. Obviously, if you've run into any issues uh, or you want to submit a pull request, that's where you'll do that as well. A brief shout out to our contributors so far, other than me. Uh, there's eight shown here. I attended a conference in Europe uh, last month, uh, and already we have two new contributors since then. Uh, so we've already added, uh, in this case, an Arabic analyzer, uh, sort of a new contribution that came out of uh, the work since that conference. Briefly, a little bit of a roadmap. Uh, right now, all the results, they're always sorted by score, right? Most of the time, that's what you want, but there are some important use cases where you want to sort on other fields. So we want to add that capability. Better spelling suggestions and fuzzy search. Again, this is an area where I would say fuzzy search is really common, right? Because humans type in things, they mishear things. It's, it's very important. Uh, but it's hard to do efficiently. And so it's one of those cases where we can trade off memory uh, to speed that up quite a bit. And there's a lot of interesting data structures to do that. Next, performance. Everyone wants to know about performance. Again, I have some slides that I don't have time to show you today about performance, but it's something we're working on. We spent a lot of time trying to get the features right and the API right to begin with, but now we're sort of coming out of that phase, and we're starting to say, okay, what can we do to make it perform better? And then ultimately, we want to lead up and prepare for a 1.0 release. That's not because we're done, but because there's enough already that's pretty usable that it's going to be beneficial to everybody if we can stabilize the on-disk format and stabilize the API, and then move on to the next version, obviously. One more thing. When I had this awesome opportunity to come to India, I wanted to do something to sort of tie this in and make this make sense. So we've gone ahead and we've actually recently built a Hindi analyzer. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very new, so I'll caution you, the results may not be great. Uh, what you see here, again, I whipped up a quick application that used it. This is searching for, I believe, the Hindi term for computer and showing some results there, highlighting. Um, I did get one native speaker to look at it and make sure I didn't have anything too embarrassing showing up here. Um, but again, this is a great example of where we need your help, right? Uh, you can help us make this better. And I know there are a lot of languages spoken here in India. So if this isn't the right one for you, if you have an interest in another language, right, we need your help. We can, we can add support for your languages if you guys help out. So that's all. Thank you.